Hello, good morning. Today, I'm going to cover a case study about education verification in India. It's a unique case study. And uh, before I jump onto it, uh, let's talk about what really an education verification is. Education verification basically authenticates candidates' education claims directly with the registrar and the administrative offices. We compare claims made by the candidate with information on the official files and alert uh, you about any kind of inconsistencies that we discover. Now, what is this uh, all about, this presentation? This presentation or this case study is about applicant created documentation where applicant generates fake documentation about their education credentials using existing university documentation or using someone else's credentials and posing them as their own or using existing university stationery to show the authenticity of the reply that they create and slowly and slowly candidates are getting more creative please note that the university and schools in such kind of documentation are not diploma mills such cases are not frequent but their occurrence is increasing day by day so the case study that we are going to cover today is uh, for a university called Veer Bahadur Singh Purvanchal University. Veer Bahadur Singh Purvanchal University is a very well established university in which was set up in 1987 in a town called Jaunpur in state of Uttar Pradesh as you can see on the map. It's a state government owned university. It's a very very big university which has more than 300,000 students enrolled at any point of time. It's a residential plus uh, affiliated university where there are many number of colleges and institutions which are affiliated to Veer Bahadur Singh Purvanchal University. It has about 350 graduate and postgraduate colleges which are affiliated. So you can imagine how old this university is and how large this university is. So let's look at a uh, timeline on this case, on this case study. So on 12th of July on 2013, we re we sent our request to the university with a certain candidate's documentation and also we paid a university fee of about 200 rupees while sending the request out. Uh, on 6th of August, we had sent a reminder to our first request, which was sent on 30th of July to the university. Magically, on July 31st, we received a reply confirming the credentials of the candidate, but this reply was received from a post office by the name Al Jhansi Post Office. The letter formats were incorrect, the envelopes were incorrect, the stationary use was incorrect. Even the response sent was from 300 miles, which is about 80 miles away from the university. On 12th of August, we sent a reply. We received a reply from the university requesting for all year mark sheet and also a fee of 500 rupees. That is additional fee that we have to pay. Initially, remember, we paid a fee of 200 rupees, but now the university is asking for additional fee of 500 rupees because now the fee has changed to 700 rupees. Uh, request we, we send the request to the university with copy of degree and mark sheet that we receive after contacting our client and the additional fee was also sent to the university. But before, as soon as we send the request, on by September 10th, we received a second letter uh, confirming the credentials of the candidate. But this time again, the letter format was incorrect and we are going to talk about more further. But by October 27th, we received the final response from university where provided credentials were fake as per the university. Now, the question is, what we received on July 31st and September 10th, those two replies, how come we got these replies? Uh, was it an applicant or someone from the university was involved sending us those kind of replies? As we move further, we're going to see some exhibits and see what kind of information we received. So let's look at the first reply that we received from the university. Now, as you can see, uh, the language used in this format is in Hindi. That's the national language and also national language of the state itself of state of Uttar Pradesh. You can see on the top right corner there is a number called 1861 that is called a control number. Now this serial number is visible on the letter is also visible on the top of the envelope that I'm going to show in the next slide. That is how they keep track of which envelope uh, is with the which letter so that the letters do not get mixed up. Now the, the, the reply on the bottom of this letter is in Hindi, but it basically means that we are required to send additional fee of 500 rupees and all year mark sheets. Now, what you see on your screen is a envelope scan. 
where on the top right corner again you will see a control number 1861 which is matching the letter that was uh, sent to us inside this envelope and this format of the letter is the official envelope from the university itself. Now let's look at the scan of response to the reminder request that we have sent. It's a similar kind of format from the university where the language in Hindi, the control number on the top is 2024 on the top right corner which is a serial number which is mentioned also on the uh, copy of the envelope that we're going to see following this screen. Again the reminder says that we have to send an additional fee of 500 rupees and also all year mark sheet. And you can see the, the language that being used in this format is completely in Hindi. This is a scan of envelope that we maintained and you can see on the top right corner it is 2024 that is matching the reply that was received inside this envelope from the university and the format of the envelope is also similar to the format of envelope that we received in the previous reply. Now let's see uh, what happened in these two replies that we received even before we got the actual replies from the university. Now the letter dated July 31st, the letter confirms applicant credentials. But when we looked closer on these documents, the format of the letter was incorrect, the envelope was incorrect, the stationery was incorrect, and the letter were dispatched 300 miles away from the actual university. Now let's look at this uh, scan of reply. As you can see on this screen, the reply is completely in English. The format is completely uh, different than what format we are used to when we receive replies from this kind of university. The stationery use is completely wrong. And so these were some of the uh, pointers that we saw, some of the things that we saw on this letter, which uh, raised our alarm bells, thinking there's something wrong with this letter. And then when we turn the envelope and we looked at the envelope more closely, you can see the, the, the way the address has been written. And if you look at the post slip or the post receipt at the back of the envelope, in a zoomed view on the right, you will see it was dispatched from Jhasi post office with a pin code or a zip code 284001. So as you can compare both the envelopes, the format of the envelopes are also completely different. So final response that we received from the university was that the letter confirmed that the provided document was fake and it was not as per the record. Now let's look at the response which was received from the university itself. This is a standard format from the university where they provide verification in a certain tabular format. Again, it is noticeable to look at the uh, couple of different items that we want to highlight. One is the control number. Here the control number is 3120. Second, the language used here is partly English and partly Hindi because they had mentioned the name of the qualification and the name of the college that was mentioned in the provided documentation of the candidate. The documents clearly were fake and the record did not match and the communication is Hindi as of course that is the reply and the language they follow at the state. Now let's look at again the, this is basically a third envelope copy of the university where they still mentioned the control number on the top right corner that is 3120. In addition you can see the format it is very similar to the previous two different envelopes that we received. Now let's see what the third, second fake reply was. This reply was received on September 10th 2013. Again this letter confirmed the applicant's credentials. On a closer look again we found that the format of the letter was incorrect, the envelope was incorrect, the stationery was incorrect and this time Letter were dispatched from Georgetown Post Office, which is about 70 miles from the university. So clearly something was something was not in the order here as well. So if you look at the format now of the reply that we received, now suddenly the format of the reply have changed. Well, let's see what things that have changed. Uh, the reply is in two languages now, Hindi and English. The stationery is incorrect, the letter format is also incorrect. This is not the way we typically receive replies from Veer Bahadur Singh Purvanchal University. Now let's look at the envelope. The envelope itself is incorrect because again the format is, they have tried to come close to the format of what the university would typically send. But again the for format they did not match to what the real format is. There was no control number mentioned on it. Secondly if you look closer look at the receipt that was pasted behind the uh, envelope you could see it was dispatched from a town place called Georgetown with a zip code 211002. This is 80 miles away from the university. So again uh, something was incorrect in the way the response was received. Now if we try and put all these three locations on maps 
नंबर ए और द पिन नंबर ए रिफ्लेक्स झांसी पोस्ट ऑफिस पिन नंबर बी रिफ्लेक्स जॉर्ज टाउन पोस्ट ऑफिस एंड द पिन नंबर सी इज द एक्चुअल यूनिवर्सिटी लोकेशन विच इज इन जौनपुर यू कैन सी द डिस्टेंस दिस इज ग्राफिकली डिपिक्टिंग हाउ फार दीज लोकेशन वर दी सिटीज वर फ्रॉम वेयर दोथ द टू रिप्लाईज विच वर फेक वर डिस्पैच it is to be noted that this university veer bahadur singh purwanchal university has a post office on campus because they have a post office on campus hence all the letters can only be dispatched from their post office and the reason why candidate decided to send from different post offices because they cannot really go to the university post office and send and send uh, fake replies from there they would get caught now if we put both fake replies side by side just for comparison purposes you would see that uh, the both replies itself are uh, completely different to each other and something was definitely going wrong here the formats are correct incorrect the language is incorrect even the content of the reply is also incorrect but again when we see the rep the actual reply from the university where university with the uh, control number 3120 the reply it clearly says that documents are fake i would go back again to the previous reply to show you a difference as you can see here both the replies are of completely different format versus the reply that you get to see now on your screen now let's look at the degrees compare the actual degree is on the right hand side and the fake degree is on the left hand side as you can see the formats are a little different and uh, that's the way the documents has been altered while providing the documentation for verification now let's look at the mark sheet as well so this is the close compare this is the close uh, analysis that we did when we received the mark sheet as well as you can see on these mark sheet that was provided by the candidate the marks are absolutely same received in two different semesters that is not possible even the signatures that you see on the bottom part of the mark sheets are also not possible because those signatures are absolutely the same they are year apart but the template used to make these kind of documentation is absolutely same and which is really not possible so the final update on the order was that the order was closed based on response from the university and further we did not pursue anything on that and we did not receive any more fake documentation or any other replies uh, after september 10 so the question is is applicant or someone else from the university staff was involved in the entire process applicant has fabricated an entire education documents and not only documents applicant also got involved in their background check to get the best background check report sent to the background screening company in order to uh, apply for a job or some other purpose now let's look at the importance of university fee like in this case we paid the university fee and hence a genuine reply was received if a university fee is paid we can expect an authentic response from the university though the turnaround time would increase but expect the real turnaround time it cannot be very quick if the cases are fake it will take some time for the verification to arrive your service provider should be able to support you with proof of verification especially in cases of any dispute if a candidate raises a dispute your service provider or any company that you work with or partner that you work with should be able to provide you with a proof of verification and also proof of fee that is paid if there are any kind of disputes it is important to follow business ethics and the right way of doing business that goes without saying the cost of verification is definitely going to get high but the quality of verification is also extremely high with once the university fees are being paid your provider can also be audited but otherwise if you're not paying this fee you would have uh, different consequences for example your audit provider cannot be authenticated the quality of verification is going to be low definitely it's not an ethical way of doing business where you are not paying the university fee wherever it is required if fee is not paid you will never get a response from university because you have never you have never paid the fee so there is no reason for the university to respond back to you or you will ultimately end up getting a fabricated response so what are the lesson learned by this case study just because a reply is on some kind of stationery which says the list out university name does not mean it is an authentic reply your service provider needs to have a skill set to process correct background check 
Remember, background check is a very, very important task that you are doing. And just because a reply has been received does not mean the job is done. It requires complete due diligence. It is definitely a time-consuming process. It requires certain kind of skill set, certain kind of knowledge. But it is important that your service provider has all that skill set. Please always pay university fee to get authentic reply from the source. It is very important. That brings end to my presentation today. I would love to hear some feedback and comments or you can write to me at verifiedamsinform.com. I hope you found this case study useful and uh, you can download uh, the, the case study itself uh, from the comment page. There's a PDF file that you can download and you can follow that as well for education purposes. Thank you very much and have a great day.